Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on vectors. Now in previous videos we talked about ways of multiplying vectors together and we talked about two ways. One was the dot product, so you take two vectors, you dot them together and you end up with a scalar or a number. And also the cross product, where you take two vectors, you cross them together and you get a vector as your answer. And we talked about some of the uh, applications and some of the um, geometric um, interpretations of those multiplications. Okay, so in this video I'm going to combine these two kinds of multiplications to form a new idea called a scalar triple product. So we're going to take the cross product and combine it with the dot product to form a new kind of operation if you like. So let me share my screen with you and we'll get underway. Okay, the scalar triple product. We are going to combine the dot product of two vectors with the cross product of two vectors. So, you know, if we have two vectors A and B, this is the dot product and the cross product, uh, say A crossed with B, is just written here. Now, if you need some refreshing on what these uh, operations are and their uh, interpretation, then you can see some of my other videos. Okay, so the scalar triple product of three vectors A, B, and C is defined with this A dotted with B cross C. Okay, so first of all, scalar triple product. This gives a hint at what kind of um, quantity this operation produces. Okay, so think of taking B crossed with C and you form a vector and you take that vector and you dot it with the vector A. So you end up with a scalar, okay? a triple product, triple would involve three vectors. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to compute the scalar triple product using determinants and then I'll do a basic example. Now in other videos I'll talk about the applications. We know that the cross product is related to area of parallelograms and it turns out the, dot pro uh, the, the scalar triple product is useful for computing volumes, volumes of uh, solids known as parallel pipettes. Okay, so let me just um, show you how you can compute this just using determinants. So we're working in three-dimensional space here. So let's say we have a vector A written as a column like that, B as this column vector, and say C as this column vector where this, you know, all the uh, components are real uh, numbers. How do we use the idea of determinants to, to uh, compute this? Okay, well, let me show you. It's a lot like when we formed an algorithm to compute the cross product of two vectors, but just with a little twist. Instead of writing i, j, k, the unit vectors at the top, you write the components of the vector a. Okay, and the the components of vector B as a row and the components of C as the third row. Okay, so we know how to compute this. You, I mean, I like to call it a little game of cover-up, right? You work your way along the top row, you start at A1, you look at the column and the row that A1 is in, and you see what's, cover them up, and you see what's left, and you multiply A1 by the determinant of this. Then you move on to the A2, you play cover up with the row and the column that A2 is in, and you multiply A2 by what's left. Then you move on to A3 and you do the same, okay? All right, so it's just the following, A1 times this determinant, so it'll be B2, B3, C2, C3. Now, this is important, you go to a minus sign next with the A2. Okay, so that'll be B1, B3, C1, C3. And then uh, A3, B1, B2 times uh, C1, B1, B2, C1, C2.
Okay. Now remember with these two by two determinants you work in a diagonal manner. That times that minus that times that. That times that minus that times that. That times that minus that times that. So you can just write this out now. So it's A1 times B2 C3 minus B3 C2. Minus B1 C3 minus B3 C1. Plus B1 C2 minus B2 C1. That's it. Okay, our answer is a number, it's a scalar. Right now, this is way too much to remember for me, but I can easily derive it just using a determinant. So that's why I like to do it. Okay, so let's do an example, and we'll see how we how we go. All right, compute the scalar triple product a dot b cross c with A, this, B, this, and C, this. Okay, so let's just run through it, and we'll, um, we'll just use determinants. So we have A dotted with B cross C. So that would be 4, 1, 1, 1, 3, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 4. So let's expand along the top row. So it's 4 times the determinant of what's left. Minus 1 times the determinant of what's left. Plus 1 times the determinant of what's left. Okay, so again, just work in a uh, diagonal type fashion, and then we can knock this off. So it's 12 minus two times a uh, negative two times negative two. So it's 12 minus four minus one times one times four minus negative two times one. So that's four minus negative two plus one. So negative 2 minus 3. Okay, so this is going to be 4 times 8, 32. Um, I'm going to get a positive 6 there, so it's going to be a negative 6. And over here I'm going to get negative 5. So 32 minus 11, 21. Okay, so we've computed the scalar triple product of these three vectors, A dot B cross C, and we have a number. Now in forthcoming videos, I'm going to show you uh, the significance, the, the geometric significance of that result. Okay, and like I hinted at before, just like the cross product can be used to compute area of parallelograms, we can use this scalar triple product to compute the volume of parallel pipettes with bases that are parallelograms. Okay, so that'll be the next video in this, in this series. So I hope you can join me then. If you have any comments, any questions, put them in the comments section. Thanks again for watching. See you later.